as uh, Warren Stevers. We appreciate the chance to visit with you. We've had several ongoing conversations with uh, Mr. Rubel and Mr. Eaton. And, uh, we're prepared to give you a, a plan that I think is pretty close to what you'll want to do, assuming the project uh, proposed bond issue size is $27 million. Uh, we can put out handouts in front of you. Inside the booklet, the first item I'm going to discuss is the interest rate movement chart. Should be labeled Exhibit A at the top. Like so. And Exhibit A reflects the 10 year U.S. Treasury note interest rates from uh, January of 2012. December 2013, and it's, uh, the pattern is somewhat alarming when you look at it, you notice there's a, a, a big increase since May of 13, and if you would go to the next page, Exhibit B, that's the, isolates that pattern of uh, rate increase since, uh, since May 1st. Um, in fact, rates have gone up about 1%. We've reflected that in our projections. And uh, it, on the better, better perspective of that is if you'll go to Exhibit C, the last page. This is the history of the 10-year U.S. Treasury note yield. And that's a barometer of the municipal market. It's probably the best one we can we can. Uh, used to illustrate uh, trends. Uh, it's not perfect because it doesn't measure one to three year rates, which those rates are still very low right now, less than 1%. And then b beyond the 10 years, it doesn't measure the long-term bond situation. But it's, it's fairly good for, for municipals. It's somewhat like the Dow Jones Industrial Average is a is a picture for people who want a quick thought of what the stock market's doing. It's really only the 30 stocks that are in that average, but when people talk about the stock market, they are usually referring to the um, Dow Jones Industrial Average. And when we talk about the muni market or the treasury market, we often use the 10-year note for that purpose. But on Exhibit C, this is a 53-year history and I'd call your attention to the fact that that's an average of 6.5% for the last 53 years. Um, we're well below that right now, even though we've come up 1% in the last five months. So uh, you're probably going to be able to sell your bonds, at least the early parts of them, at uh, 40 cents on the dollar of what you would have had to pay over the last 53 years. So from that perspective, it's still... I think a, a good time to be presenting uh, um, a, a bond proposal, and and it's something that ought to help. The voters probably know this, a lot of them, and that this would be uh, something that will, should help pass it. Is the fact that rates are going to be favorable. Um, <coughs> there. Yeah. The next item we would go to is um, why don't you, your PowerPoint uh, slide one, do you have that? And this reflects the data that's on spreadsheet one in your books. And you could turn it'll be the third page in on your slide handout. And then on book in the book spreadsheet one is on is on page uh, twelve. It covers both pages, and what we're what we're again wanting to demonstrate, just to refresh your memories, is as to how this can be a no tax increase proposal, and the fact that you have. Uh, adequate balances in the debt service fund, the, uh, the new debt will fit 
with where those surpluses are now showing, the new debt will fit within that and will not cause an increase. Now, let Lauren, Lauren want you to explain your uh, PowerPoint on the third the sh third sheet there. Okay, the PowerPoint labeled spreadsheet one at the bottom again. The yellow bars are the debt service fund balances, so the reserve balances the district has, and the blue bars are the debt service fund payments. So if you go by year, you see 12, 13, payments are slightly above balances. Same situation, 13, 14, same situation, 14, 15, and then 15, 16, that flips. So this is the current situation. You see the yellow bars growing at an increasing rate. And we only project this out until 2017, 18. We continue that out and grow even larger, as you can imagine. And that lines up, again, with the blue column on page 12 of the book, the balances. You go all the way to the bottom, you see $26 million balances to cover on the total debt service payments on the green column, $590,000 payment. So your balances are far exceeding your payments. Now, as a practical matter, when the district completes its Form C debt service for the state auditor each year, uh, those for they the state auditor the each balances year to be uh, those uh, for the state auditor the each year to be. We, could, we would have to pay bonds off early, which you would be able to do in the event this is not successful this election. Uh, you'll be able to pay bonds off early in the future. To a point, though, then we'll we'll be running out of debt. So that that. Uh, that's uh, the, but the, the, the purpose of, of uh, showing the disparity between the balances and the payments is to illustrate where, why it doesn't have to be a tax increase because those surpluses, once you add the new debt to it, they'll go away. They'll be used to make the principal and interest payment on the bonds that we're suggesting uh, for the ballot in, in April. You have any questions about that part of it? And let's let's go to uh, page uh, twelve in the book, Exhibit D. This presents the bonding capacity for the Farmington District for the April 8th of 2014 election. Page 13. 13. 13. Did I say 12? Yeah. Yes. I'm sorry, I've been doing that. 13, thank you. Uh, your capacity is just under $36 million. Your uh, project seems to be coming in at the $27 million level, so you will have almost $9 million of remaining capacity to go forward and and we could handle more than uh, I think you remember from earlier presentations we we've, we've looked at 34 million could be could have been how big it would be without raising the levy so when we put this 27 million in one of the things we'll do and work more closely with the superintendent and Mr. Eaton is that we'll have uh, try to anticipate when the next need might be and structure these uh, the new bonds so that they'll be uh, friendly to that opportunity um, when it when it might come. And uh, as you'll see when uh, Lauren goes through the PowerPoint that, that that's going to be um, important. The next item, if you would turn to page 14, We're going to talk about how we would uh, propose structuring the the twenty-seven million dollars worth of bonds, and there's a there's a factor you may recall from previous meetings when we sell no more than ten million per calendar year uh, as a tax exempt issue, then it can be bank qualified. That will lower the interest rates in Missouri about fifteen hundredths of a percent. And then it gives the banking community a chance to participate. The other thing it does is uh, you're familiar with how little you can earn now during construction or on short-term money 
because the rates, the short-term rates are so low. If we borrow the full 27 million all at once, it's going to be parked in the institutions and earning relatively nothing, and we'll be paying interest on the total 27 million from day one. So what we're suggesting as a strategy to avoid that and to save you money is that we would at least at the beginning perhaps consider three issues. 10 million and 14, 10 million and early 15, and then the other 7 million to be followed in 2016. Unless it appears that the project construction is going to need that money quicker, then we can revise that, uh, that plan as we move along. How much uh, interest does it save if we split it three ways, Lauren, compared to uh, uh, going all at once? If you notice in Exhibit 1, we have a handout there. We'll, we'll go over that more later. But the net benefit after you take into account cost of issuance is $1.6 million approximately in increased interest if you do this one $27 million issue as opposed to breaking it up and three bank qualified issues. The, the, the potential negative of our idea is if uh, interest rates uh, increase rapidly during that delay, we could end up paying higher rates on the future issues than what we would if we locked it all in at one time. Um, and the other thing is we have to uh, have enough funds available to, for the contract to work. So we, we think the 10 million sale in June will work well and then another 10 million in January should be fine. The, the rate does go pretty substantially, though, to offset this. That's, so. that's exactly right, sir. Yeah. So it, it would take a lot of increase in rates to wipe out the uh, $1.6 million that's, that we save by spreading it out. And it's not so much we're saving it as we're avoiding paying it because we don't, we don't have to start paying it till we sell the bonds. So that's, that's how it comes into play. And if, if you would look at uh, Schedule 6 on page 14, I'll call your attention to another matter. Um, this would be pre potentially the first set of bonds, and these are roughly a quarter of a percent or so above current market levels. Uh, we um, So, and uh, this would be the 10 million. There are some items in your project that are that have short average lives. The buses and the technology, some of the technology components. And if you look, the first eight years from out to 2021, we have three million eight hundred and twenty thousand dollars of bonds that would be paid off, and we would be pr proposing that the money for the short-term assets or shorter-term assets would be coming from this $3.8 million. And this will, this will then say, some in the community may say, well, why are we borrowing for 20 years to buy school buses? They don't last that long. Well, we're not really, the bonds that are going for the buses would be paid off before the, while the buses are still in very usable condition in most cases. So that's, that's a point we wanted to make. That was something Mr. Rubel and, and Mr. Eaton wanted us to, to come up with a way to make that work. And I think uh, that's the amount of money we have right now that, that should go that way. Um, why don't you go ahead and just go through the rest of it real quick. Are we, we close to it? You guys are yes, good. good. Okay for time? All right. Okay. You continue to look at the PowerPoint. You go to the next page. The bottom left-hand col column is labeled Spreadsheet Six. This is the same as the current situation, with the yellow bars as the debt service fund balances and the blue bars as the payments. And as you see, again going across year to year, the balances build, and this is including 
the two ten million dollar issues and the seven million dollar issue. So the ten million dollar issue is Schedule Six that we had shown you just a moment ago. The ten million dollar issue is Schedule Seven in 2015, and then the seven million dollar issue is Schedule Eight in 2016. So utilizing those three issues, adding up to twenty seven million dollars, the district will still be able to increase their fund balances with their current levy. So what this says is. Uh, as we move into this project and think about the future needs, right now we're fixed. We're in pretty good shape for 2017-18 fiscal year to consider another no tax increase proposal. And let's say if we, in our deliberations, you say we're not going to need it that quickly, then we'll move some of this principal more forward than it is right now. We're creating that window with this, with our theoretical structure that we have at the moment. Plus, we're getting the the 3.8 million of short-term bonds for for those assets. Uh, one thing I would uh, make a correction on is that we're assuming growth of zero percent for the next year, two percent for two years after that, and then it goes to four percent, and we have. On these PowerPoint slides, it says 4%, but that's it takes us three years before we're assuming the growth of 4%. And so if, that, if that's overly optimistic, that means these yellow bars are going to be smaller than what we're illustrating here, but they still should be well above what your payments are. And if the data that backs up this graph is on page 18 and 19 in your book. That's the spreadsheet of spreadsheet 6. And again, if you look on page 19 of the two far right-hand columns, you see the balances in the blue column gradually increasing. And the payments re remain relatively the same, about $3.1 million until you get to the last four or five years. If you look at the next slide. Yes, sir. Are we going to be short on our debt service fund? We're going to. We don't have as much money in the fund balance as the payments are going to be, but we're, it's not a. It's uh, um, the balance is is it is a fiscal year end balance, <coughs> and you have the tax money coming in in December January to. to uh, make the payments. We will have the, the new bonds set up so that there are no intercepts okay. from your operating fund from September through December. And then once the tax money is there, the state will then intercept again. So I don't think there's going to be any cash flow difficulties. Okay. That's what you're asking, right. and, and that's a good point. But, uh, the existing debt of the district already defers the intercepts. September through December for that same reason, and we would propose that as well on the new issues. Okay. So in the PowerPoint presentation, if you flip to the slide labeled Spreadsheet 9 in the lower left-hand corner, this would be doing the $27 million issue all in 2014 as one issue. And as Larry said, with non-bank qualified, you're going to get slightly higher rates, and also we would be deferring some of those payments by issuing them in three chunks as opposed to one. So you see the non-bank qualified $1.6 million more interest expense than the three issues broken up. And even if the district did do the $27, all, $27 million all at one time, you can see the yellow bars are increasing above the payments, just not as rapidly. Mm -hmm. Is that million six of savings is, is yellow bar for you if we don't have to pay it? And if we, even if we don't save quite that much, it'll still be a positive thing. Uh, the, those are the, that's the main part of our presentation regarding the, the ability to still handle the $27 million without increasing the levy. And, and I think we'll probably have a more optimal plan as you get your election passed and we enter in for the sale of the first group and then come back. We'll, there will be a lot of interaction between us and the administration to fine-tune the proposed structures, but 
right now it's very promising. The fact that you're not using the full 34 million gives us a lot of flexibility on your behalf. Um, let's look at the ballot. <clears throat> This is lay, it's uh, this here, and if you turn to the the third page of that, this is the draft language that uh, Mr. Rubel and I have gone over a couple of times. I don't know if the board has seen this before, but if this is uh, if this is the way the language would read right now, this resolution is set up that if, you, if you're all comfortable with it, it can be approved tonight. It doesn't have to be because we don't need to file until January 28th. So, but this is where we stand at the moment with uh, the project description and the order of it uh, that's been worked out with Mr. Eaton, Mr. Rubel, and, and us. And it does say in the second line of Proposition Kids on, on that page, uh, the third page in, it's the page number one, without a planned increase in the current debt service fund levy. And then at the very bottom, after the question mark, the third line from the bottom, then it says if this proposition is approved, the adjusted debt service levy of the district is expected to remain unchanged at the 90 cents per hundred dollars. So we have it in there two times to emphasize there's no <clears throat> no increase in the levy associated with the proposal. You, the other the other handout that we gave you is your election history, recent elections, and that's informational. Uh, Gives you an idea how many people will participate and uh, what the what the the history in the past has been. The uh, elections in 06 was the best. We had 68. That's an exhibit B. We had 68 and a half percent in favor, and uh, with a 20 percent participation by registered voters. And back in April 2000. Uh, that was for uh, 8890000 That one had 61% approval with around 24% participation. Um, the no tax increase component, particularly if there's uh, a united board and the community has uh, felt like they've had an opportunity to give you input and the staff has, you have a, you have a, a good chance for uh, going successfully I don't know if I mentioned earlier but in 2013 a hundred percent of our no tax increase proposals passed in 2012 92 percent did so that that in itself if you've got a good uh, message and a good project that's go the tax increase seems to be one of the main hurdles that's harder to get over so that's our that's my Larry Hart show, I guess I'd say. <laughs> well done. Is that okay? <laughs> well done. Right. I have one question. Yes, sir. On the language on the ballot. Um, I noticed the, the addition of the classrooms are down near the, near the end of the mm -hmm. language. Was that done purposely? Or was uh, it, I mean, yes. It was, it was somewhat done purposely because of the other things associated with the classrooms. We didn't want to... Uh, but that's that's a board decision on on the order that where you put this. But that was the, the wanted to emphasize the safety and security and the early childhood center and some of those things prior to that that other part of the project. But your 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 uh, observation is good because typically when we have a uh, people who will say why I didn't vote for it they say well I couldn't understand the ballot I didn't like it or it was too long or it was this or that 
usually that's not necessarily the real reason why they're against, why they were against it, but it's easier to say that instead of saying I didn't want to raise pay won't pay for it or whatever. But but that that's why we're giving it to you early so you can uh, get comfortable that that the way we have the wording is the way you'd you'd prefer it. And we have a lot of flexibility in terms of whether we want to go with very specific language or general language and where we put different items. Um, so then that actually is one of the things, if we're ever able to get back into school, which would be fantastic, that we're going we're gonna to actually talk to the administrative team about that bond language and, and some of their preferences as well. And Proposition Kids will not be the title of the, of the bond. Won't be? No. You already told me that, didn't you? Yeah, that's okay. I, I'm sorry. I, no, that's all right. Any other questions for Mr. Hart? Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you Lauren. Okay, well, in that event, what we'll need to do is to adjourn this meeting so that we can say another Pledge of Allegiance and go to another <laughs> meeting. So do... Um, do I hear a motion to adjourn and a second? So moved. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Okay. We are adjourned from our work session meeting. I need a motion to approve the agenda and a second. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Um, board dialogue, anyone on the board have anything they'd like to say this evening except Merry Christmas and hope we get back to school before the new year. What's uh, what's happening tomorrow, by the way? No school no tomorrow, school tomorrow. unfortunately. Okay, well, perhaps Thursday. Thursday, we're, we are we'll shooting keep our for hopes Thursday. Up for Absolutely. That. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I think we have... We have some people from Roosevelt here this evening. Miss Johnson, I see you're back there. Would you like to come up to the microphone? <laughs> oh, I'd love, we'd love Absolutely. that. There we go. Good job. You might guys have to mic. You can you share a chair, JP? Thank you so much. Oh, great! We're so glad you're here. Um, but first, I think uh, we'll start with uh, Roosevelt. Um, would like to uh, recognize our featured teacher, and our featured teacher um, this year is Miss Tara Lacey. Miss Lacey. Um, Mrs. Lacey um, is a third grade teacher at Roosevelt. She's an exceptional teacher. Um, she has been teaching for the last 12 years, um, the last 10 years at Roosevelt. Mrs. Lacey finds it very easy to get to know each and, one, each and every one of her students individually and cares very much for her students. She's a great teacher with unlimited strategies. She is a great leader and one who is always willing to share and help others. Mrs. Lacey serves on many committees, um, including the Roosevelt Advisory Committee, the PBS Committee. She serves on ELA Curriculum Committee, and she's working with the Consolidated Schools Project this year. So we're very proud to have Mrs. Lacey as one of our third grade teachers at Roosevelt. Thank you. You're welcome. We'd also like to recognize um, two volunteer parents that we have in the building. Um, we decided that we needed two Heartland heroes this year, not just one. Um, so at this time, I would like to recognize Mr. Anthony Wallace and Mr. Sean Merritt. And we kept it a surprise. So they have no idea why they're here, other than they're supporting the student council. Oh, 
all. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Merritt? You're welcome. Um, Roosevelt's honoring these two gentlemen this evening um, because they, at the beginning of the school year, um, put in countless hours helping our student council. This year with student council, we, we wanted to kind of step it up a notch. We wanted to um, not just have a couple of activities for them to do. We want we wanted them to participate in several projects throughout the year, including some service projects that they're getting ready to tell you about. Um, so to kick it off, uh, Mrs. Callahan and Mrs. Rubel, our sponsors, um, decided that homecoming was the perfect time to start uh, this big kickoff, that they wanted to let the kids design a float, they wanted to help them build the float, and quite frankly, it would not have happened without the help of these two men. Um, they spent every evening helping the, the kids build the float, plan the float. Um, I was meeting with Mr. Merritt at Lowe's, you know, building, getting supplies, and so um, we wanted to recognize them because they uh, were um, just wonderful in helping us get off to a great start this year with our student council. So thank you very much, guys. Appreciate it. Okay, so for the fun stuff now, uh, I would like to introduce um, a great group of kids. Uh, all of our kids are wonderful, super kids at Roosevelt. Um, this group is um, our future leaders. They're, uh, they're our 2013-2014 student council. Uh, but before I introduce the student council, I'd like to introduce uh, Mrs. Lacey, or excuse me, Mrs. Uh, Misty Rubel and Mrs. Lisa Callahan. So if they'd like to come up and help with the... <laughs> Um, <laughs> they're our sponsors this year for our student council and they they've been wonderful I knew that they would do a great job and they are they're running with it and doing a wonderful job and the kids are going to tell you just a few activities that um, they're currently um, working on some things that we've been working on um, at the beginning of the school year so just to introduce them I'd like to start with Morgan this is Morgan Miller and then Trista Hampton and then McKenna Wallace and then we have McKenna Davis, and we have Jacob Merritt, Hi. we have Hi. Mr. J.P. Rubel, Hi. and we have Abby Robbins. <laughs> All right, so um, the kids would just like to tell you a few things that's uh, going on at Roosevelt, so go ahead, guys. Um, one of the things we did is we welcomed the veterans on Veterans Day, and we led the Pledge of Allegiance. We greet, we greeted the, <laughs> we greeted the grandparents on Grandparents Day. We um, built a float for um, homecoming, and the theme was the night at Disney. We currently sponsored the Penny Drive for Season of Hopes. We are doing Cat Day for a Season of Hope. We're doing the Midnight Snack for Season of Hope. We are volunteering our time for ringing the bell for Salvation Army. Awesome. Morgan would like to tell, tell you just a little activity that we have going on right now. We have been raising money for the iReady program, and for every for amount of, a certain amount of lessons you do, you get a really cool duck. Ooh. <laughs> Logan, can, or Morgan, can you tell the um, board members who picked the reward ducks out for the kids? Student council did. All right. I just wanted to say thank you for letting them come and speak. It's been a, a privilege to let them do this. They're very excited. And just um, as confidently as they spoke this evening, um, Mrs. 
uh, Rubel, Mrs. Callahan, and I meet with them, and they are that quick to help do any project. They are the most kind-hearted students you have ever seen. They want to do it all. They want to help everybody and they want, you know, they just want to, they just want to do it all. So we're very proud of them and just wanted to say thank you for letting them speak this evening. All right. Thank you. I think we'd like to shake their hands. Absolutely. Okay JP has one more thing. Too. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, JP no. has one more thing. <laughs> <laughs> The gifts and the cards were made by Mr. McDonald, our guidance teacher, and I just hope you guys all like them, and so you can look at them now or whenever <laughs> you would like. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank all you right. so much. Abby, you want to leave? You can shake their hand. Thank you very much. Good job, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for doing good such job. a good job. Good job. Thanks for coming this evening. We're so proud of you. It's such a nice thing to be good to people. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much for coming. Would you like to leave now? They <laughs> would. And Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas. Great job. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Thank you. So I don't know how you're going to follow that, but you're next. I am, I am not. I, I uh, appreciate Larry Hart coming in and presenting information to us, you know, as we've discussed as an executive group and as we've discussed a little bit as a board. You know, I think, you know, there's continued work that needs to be done in terms of the bond language and getting the administrator's eyes on that. I know executive group has, has seen that and we're working through that process. And we're excited. I know I'm excited to have uh, Hoyner and Associates presenting in a work session uh, at starting at 6 o'clock and looking at some of those bond, uh, some of the bond assignments, some of the work scheduled and some of the some of the items that we'll be looking for as we move forward uh, in the planning session so again looking forward to uh, that presentation by Hoyner and Associates starting at six o'clock thank it. you thank okay. you all right so moving down to um, our discussion items um, I've got one that we pulled and that was a policy change and that would uh, um, Jeff you want to speak to that please yes uh, on the, uh, it's on one on the file for application of the community use of school facilities, and on it, uh, groups A and B responsible paying custodian directly a rate of fifteen dollars an hour. And I looked up our salary schedule, and that's below the top end of the salary schedule, and I'm thinking we need to bump that up to twenty dollars an hour. But I was just thinking, if we have a custodian working for the school district, for them, they're not actually working for the school district, what happens if they get hurt or something? As far as insurance goes for yes. our staff? Well, what I'm thinking of is, or could they come back and claim workman's comp in that? Okay. Okay. Well, like I said, it's below the fifteen dollars is below the top end of it. I'd like to make a motion that we make that to twenty dollars an hour to cover for the people that is at the top that they would be at least making at least as, as more than uh, than at fifteen. Can we um, go ahead and vote on everything except the except D, and we'll pull D, and then we'll have a. You can make that motion at that time. Is that okay? okay? That's fine. President Hall, the um, action that needs to take place are for the policies that were submitted last month. Yeah, these two the policies. Yeah. Um, yeah, these are under, okay, these so under, these are under review. Under so review. you'll actually do that. We'll be good. Okay. All right. So we don't have to pull anything. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, so may I need a motion and a second to approve the consensual items. So moved. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Okay, thank you. Okay, so I need a motion 
to adjourn to closed session. Yes. Here you go. Um, what would you like? I make a motion we move to closed session to discuss personnel pursuant to 610.021. Paragraphs 1, 3, 13, and 14. Okay. I'll second. All right. Davis? Yes. Han? Yes. Payne? Yes. Howard? Yes. Lawson? Yes. Noble? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Okay. Well, thank you all for coming and have a very Merry Christmas.